Hello Nigeria, hello Africa, hello world. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. We're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos and today we promise you yet another exciting pack, um, package, another exciting episode of the program. Um, today we're going to be talking golf. Golf in Nigeria golf across the world but you know as is the case with, the, with this program our focus is going to be on how to develop the local industry and in the studio with me today are two powerful guests who are avid golfers and they're involved in some way with the development and the promotion of golf in Nigeria. First is going to be Mr. Tade Adekunde. He is the captain of the Ikoi Golf Ikoi Golf, 30, 1938 Golf section, right? Yes, you are correct. <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, and um, next is Mr. Ayo Ade Boye. He is the group CEO of Aravo. Aravo um, is, a, is, a, is a golf sponsor. Uh, they sponsor some golf, golf in tournaments. And he's going to be telling us why they do that and how it all adds up to uh, the picture of how to develop golf in Nigeria. Now, golf is, is, is one of the most popular games for the biggest players in both the private and, and the public sectors. Internationally, it's a hugely success, it's a hugely lucrative sport, both in terms of um, whether you play it or whether you, you, know, you organize tournaments and you, you, you manage um, golf assets, all right? Now, the thing with us in Nigeria is that golf has mostly been, um, golf mostly exists as an amateur sport. Um, but what is being done to ensure that um, more can be done so that we can maybe um, develop more Nigerian players to play professional golf, um, uh, you know, uh, PGA golf, for instance, and so they can reap from the, the huge industry that is out there. Uh, fortunately, I have guests here who say that there's progress being made on that front. And um, basically, I'm going to try and show through them what the prospects are, what the opportunities are going to be uh, long term. All right. So you're welcome to the program. Uh, first on my left is Ayo. Ayo, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Gal, for the opportunity to join the studio today. I really appreciate spending time with you today. That's great. Tadi. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be in your studio today. Tadi and I go back a long way. Yeah. You, know, you, you found golf, golf, but we didn't start out as golfers. We, uh, we didn't start with talking about <laughs> sports business. We were, in, we were in school together. But it's great to see that um, he's, he's doing great with, with, with golf in Nigeria. So t tell me, what do you think is the picture of golf internationally is, is big business, yeah. right? Um, people are making, in the United States, for instance, they have about 70, 70, 17,000 golf courses, according to um, uh, golf, golf, well, uh, golf website. The statistics that you have. Statistics. Yes. They have about, okay. you know, in all of Africa, we have just about 820 something golf courses, mm -hmm. right? So it means that, you know, we're probably um, holding the short end of the stick. But then in South Africa, they're doing great. They have the, they've had a history of producing world-class players. You know, where, where is, do you see golf going in this country? You know, um, where are we coming from and where are we going? <laughs> well, you know that uh, just because of Tiger Wood, mm. golf became popular in this part of the world. Mm. South Africa, you can understand. Mm. So no need to delve into that aspect. Yeah. But in this part of the world, the West Africa and other part of the world, Tiger Wood was more or less the, the, the star mm. that opened the door that most people started, we could identify with him. Mm. And then instead of that, say, ah, what kind of a game is this one, this boring game that one, some young guys who should be in their office playing football and now chasing one small ball around. But 
when you get into it, you then understand very well that uh, it's a game that teaches you many things. It's a game that you have to put commitment into, that you have to practice. You have to know it. It's a very jealous game that uh, if you stay off, it will also leave you alone. Mm. If you come back, it will deal with you. you can, it's a game that you cannot master. Mm. Because, and the beauty of it is that I think it's the only game in the world, I may be wrong, statistics may prove otherwise, that you play. You are not competing against anybody. You are competing against the cause, yourself. And that's the beauty of that game. It's growing in Nigeria gradually. Um, I may not be an authority, so I will not lay claim to it, mm. but I think it's catching up gradually, mm. even with the younger generation. If you come to Ikoyu Club 1938, where I'm the captain of the golf section of Ikoyu Club 1938, you see the younger generations, young, we say the Gen Z people, mm. they're actually picking it up. Really? They don't see it now as a, for older generations or a retirement game. It's when they cross over, maybe from lawn tennis or table tennis or from squash, and I say, ah, what have I been doing? I've been missing, I wish I could have started earlier on this game. So it's really picking up. I must do, you, say. do you get a sense that golf is, is growing uh, based on your own experience yes. at Ikoi Club, too, I yes. imagine? Yes, Ikoi Club, uh, mm. 1938. So looking at, like Captain rightly mentioned, looking at the statistics, Mm. of the number of subscribers to golf session you could see the, the trend mm. and you made mention of something remarkable uh my kids they, when they came home mm. uh between 16 and 14 i introduced them to golf uh you know the usual way of oh it's boring it's for others i realized that they actually pick up the club and say that you know let's go and play golf <laughs> so i see a lot of kids coming around yeah. so the perception is changing gradually from this boring this boring game. I remember when I started playing golf some six, seven years ago. My niece in America was telling her mom that he's on choir as he retired because I see that he's playing golf <laughs> more often. <laughs> <laughs> I say, no, I'm not retired. I'm still very actively involved, in, 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 of course, in day to day business. Mm -hmm. But again, like Captain Rightly mentioned, it's a very jealous game and you have to be passionate about it. And all it takes for you is to get committed. Once you're committed, you just realize that you don't want to go, but you want to come back tomorrow. Mm. Today, there's a joke that if you play a birdie today or play very well today, the more reason you want to come back tomorrow. Mm. If you don't play well today, the more reason you want to come back tomorrow. Exactly. So there's something that we always <laughs> want to bring you back tomorrow. And let me tell you, the passion goes beyond just playing. An average golfer, either beginner, amateur, or pro, will tell you, you realize that most times you play golf in your dream to you to wake up. Mm -hmm. You realize you're playing golf in your dream, then you wake up, you're playing golf. Mm -hmm. And when you play well, when you go to sleep, you see yourself playing well in your dream. Mm -hmm. Even when you don't play well, you go to sleep, you see yourself playing well, correcting what you have done in the day, in the dream. So again, it becomes, golf is part of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does this translate to the commerce? Because you see, that's where, that's where I'm, I'm actually happy that you say that young people are taking to golf. Yeah. And the number is growing. In fact, there's a picture of a young guy that I got off the internet. Uh, some Odoko, I think. Uh, I can't remember now. You know, he he won the on the junior tournament in IBB golf course okay. for about three years or so. Hmm. So young people are taking. How do we? Do you do you think that we we, we are in a position just to to based on the effort we have put in over the years? Do you think we we can re realistically expect that Nigerians uh, can play competitive golf? Yes, I, will, I can raise my head up and say, yes. Let me speak. I may not be able to speak for other clubs in Nigeria, other mm -hmm. golf clubs in Nigeria, who have played in most of the courses in Nigeria. But I will speak for the golf section of mm -hmm. Ikoyu Club 1938. Yeah. Right now, we have uh, the young Pedro, the son of uh, former deputy governor of Lagos State. Oh, thank you. Who is a young guy that started in the Koyi Club as a youth. He has graduated now. He's a professional golfer on PGA. Wow. He's on tour. 
he plays there. So he's playing, he earns, he plays for money. You know, professional play yeah. for money. So he's earning his money. That's a guy. Mm. And we have two ladies too that started in the Koyu Club 1938. You know, you know, millions of people play it in America. The one that will turn pro yeah. will just be a percentage, a minute percentage. Mm, yeah. Uwadia is there, and uh, Obo is there. In actual fact, Obo partner last week on uh, the ladies' uh, golfers, uh, the, the, the ladies' version of the men. And Obo partner with an American lady, and they came joint eighth in the world. Mm. So, and they all, the Uwadia and the, and Obo started in the Koyu Club 1938 as young, uh, 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 as, uh, as toddlers mm. playing golf. And I will give credit to our lady subsection of the golf section. They have actually taken to it. They are the one who developed these skills with our professionals, the training pros mm. like, that they call them in the Koyu Club. And they've started the program now since May. Every Sunday, every Saturday and Monday, you bring your kids from age two to, I think, 17, and uh, they, they train them. There's another guy now, the lowest handicapper in the Koyu Club, handicap two, Osirek Beme. Mm -hmm. He's also going, I think his father is, is going to go to, you know, all these people, they attend the university, oh. mm. they finish the university, only that they will go to a pro school, you know, the way they do it in America, mm. you have combined academics with your passion. And they graduated in their various courses, and they are now professional. So, the government is towing that line. And we have so many of them that I believe IBB will be, you, the guy you mentioned, might be going towards that line. From other clubs also, Port Harcourt, but I will speak for Koi. The young ones are really coming up, and parents are seeing that this, if my daughter or my son should take into this sport, into this game, it can be a profession for him or her in future. Mm. So that aspect is there. And uh, the members of the, uh, the golf section, they give the children ample time, they support them. Uh, in July, I think July, there is the uh, Ikoyi Open for the children in which people will come from uh, all over the country mm. to, for the children to play against each other from age 5 to 16, I guess. I, I, think you, I'm right. I was just going to ask that. that do you have inter-club yes. junior competition? Yes, yes. Mm. We participated in the Abuja one last year, mm. and this year we are reviving the Koyu one, and okay. it's going to take place this month. Okay, one of the problems that you know, professional players have you know, across virtually all sports is... is Speaking from the Nigerian example, okay. is the irregularity of you know competitive platforms or opportunities, mm. right? Like you said, if if you don't take care of golf today, it punishes you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And the one way to take care of golf in such a way that it rewards you consistently is that you play on a regular basis. Yeah. Right. Do you have any such do you have like a junior program? Across, the, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you're not the right person to ask. Maybe it's the uh, Nigerian Golf Federation. Yeah, sure. But you guys are in the golf space. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have any, you know, calendar through which you know young young players um, participate and hone their skills with the view of probably becoming um, professional oh. players? Yeah, that's what I just explained. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like like I said, mm -hmm. I speak specifically. For, for you. In, uh, in May, not only the children something, we got an ice program. That one has been on maybe since before I was born. Mm. They do it in May, and they also do a program, an extensive program in July, when students are on holiday. Okay. They do a lot of series of programs. That's why I told you some of these people that have turned pro now, Right. They are, the people I mentioned are maybe 19, mm. 20, 21. Mm. That's their age range uh, uh, that they finish. So those programs are there. And this year, we've extended it. This program started in April, in which Saturday and Monday, all these children, they come around, and our lady subsection are in charge, and they, the tr pros train them, tutor them on various 
aspect of uh, golf, mm -hmm. including the etiquette of the game. And uh, they've been playing. And then in July, they have a kind of a tournament. That one would not be, now be an annual tournament that will take place in the Koyu Club 1938, in which will be like a children open for children across children in Nigeria. Maybe in future, we can then extend it to West Africa, Africa. Mm -hmm. And if possible, if we get sponsors, mm -hmm. we can then extend it to the whole world. Why not? Okay. <laughs> so, first, I'm going to take you up on the sponsorship part because, again, you need the money to, to, to get these things done. But then, if you put money into, into a sport, a, 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 a proven sport like golf, yeah. it fits you back of course. tenfold as yeah. it is. But first, before we go there, I, I'm going to ask him, because you say your children play golf, right? My children play golf. How easy is golf? How accessible is golf to the, to the everyday Nigerian? How expensive is it, for instance? How, how <laughs> golf is not cheap. Mm. I agree, but I don't want to talk about how much golf costs. Mm. I want to talk about the passion. Mm. So when you have passion for something, mm. cost is no longer an issue. So what is driving you is the passion and the interest around the golf itself. You have passion, you don't have money. What do you do? So we see people with passion without money. Like when we play, we see caddies. Mm. So again, when I see, for example, when I see caddy who knows how to play golf, I, I try to encourage them at times. Mm. The most important thing is passion. So uh, not to, to digress, what Captain Tali was talking about, we're talking about the golf academy for kids. Mm. I mean, somebody sponsor kids, parents or guys yeah. sponsor kids. What gives you joy is that when you sponsor someone, you could see the passion and the skill. Those are what actually motivate people to want to sponsor the person the more. Mm. So before you talk about the cost, it's not cheap. Mm. However, interest, passion comes before you even talk about the cost of mm. the golf itself. But in terms of accessibility, because it, it's there, but again, it's not cheap. Mm. It's really not cheap coming around to play golf. Actually, when I when I did check. It, it, it appears that we have um, our own fair share of golf courses around Nigeria. Of course. We have about 55 golf courses. It's more than that. And chances are that there are more because... No, it's more than 56. More than yeah. More than that. Which is, which is saying a lot because yeah. there's some, I was shocked to find out that there are some countries, in, even in North Africa, where they have just one, one yeah. major course you know, in the entire country. Mm -hmm. And here we're talking about over 55 and 6. Well, how is this not translating to, you know, Nigeria being a, a, a major golfing nation um, on, on, on the continental and the global stage. But I would like you to hold what you have to say um, so that we can take a short break. When we return, uh, we're going to talk about all of the things that we have started um, to, to get to drive towards, right? And we're also going to be talking about the money. How do you get money behind golf in Nigeria? Where do you make money from? Um, if you want to invest in, in golf, right? So take a minute or for a short break, get some water, grab a friend to join you in the to join you in watching this conversation, or just generally relax. We'll be back in a moment. When we return, the business continues. Now, welcome back to the program. It's Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. And the station, of course, is Plus TV Africa. And we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. With me in the studio today is to discuss golf. We've been talking about golf. And um, I have with me Mr. Tade Adekunle, who is the golf captain at the Koi Club 1938. And then with me also is Mr. Ayo Adeboye, who is the group CEO of Aravo, a company that um, supports golf in, in Nigeria, all right? So today we were talking about, before, the money part of it, right? How do we get money into golf? Because look, let's take Ikoi Club, for instance. Your membership is, is I imagine, um, populated by very powerful people in government and in, in the private sector as well. These are guys who, if they come together, can 
collectively muscle the resources you need to to have you know one or two or three decent annual national tournaments you know that can reward profession reward professional golfers in Nigeria. I am personally not aware of any such initiative at this point in time. So I would need you to educate me whether you have any such or whether you have plans for any such. Okay, you're talking about professional golf. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm an amateur. Okay. I don't intend to turn professional. Yeah. And never too late, but I don't intend to. Okay. Now, the beauty of it is that talking about um, professional golf, it's all boils down to sponsorship. Hmm. It's all boils down to sponsorship because even if you look at it at PGA in America that you see every week, mm. sponsors put money behind. There are brands mm. who commit lots of money behind it. Mm. And some of those brands, uh, I think at a point in time, our pro will grow to such a level that they will put resources behind. Right now, what most sponsors support is the amateur aspect of it. The, which is like recreation to us. Mm. You know, the other aspect where they win money, those are the pros. We pray for, or we play for leisure. Mm. We pray for fun, uh, trophies, you have them and all those things. So basically, it's for sponsors to identify that this brand, if they identify with this brand, the professional level, mm. you'll be able to make connection between their brands and the game, mm. between their brand, the sponsorship, mm. and the audience that are watching. So I think when we get to such a level, so that passion that uh, I just spoke about, will the brand may then be able to connect and say, that is where it lies for the pro aspect of it. But some people mm. are also pushing it gradually. Mm. There are some it may not be big like the PGA mm. that we see on TV mm. and all those things. But there are some uh, professional tournaments. I know of, uh, can I mention name of brands? Is yeah, it allowed? Yeah, sure. yeah. Mary Stem. Mm. Mary Stem supports, uh, they do a tournament for professionals. Then the, uh, Femi Pedro, the Isaracena former deputy governor, they have the ultimate challenge. Mm. In December, in the Koye Club, where his son, that I told you as Tom Pro, mm. that played in PGA mm. on tour, uh, he come in December, he's always home in December to come and play. And what they do is to select across West Africa, mm. the leading golfers. You know, they have written, like, uh, I don't know whether it's Olakwade now that is leading in Nigeria yeah, or yeah. is it Olakwade? Yeah. Okay. So they pick the best from each country, maybe three, three, and they Ultimate challenge, winner takes all. Mm. And they put resources behind it and all those things. It's a, it's a huge tournament, two days tournament. Mm. And they play for, uh, that's 72, 72 holes. Yeah. In the Club. Club. So Saturday and Sunday. That's the one that you said that's sponsored by Pedro. Yes. Yeah. Pedro and some uh, other people put resources behind it. Marte and some other people support okay, that but initiative. Here's the thing about golf. Yeah, that um, I know you guys are amateurs. You, you, it's a recreational club, mm -hmm. but you'd find that globally, you know, across most of these sorts of clubs, mm -hmm. like, I mean, look, Wimbledon is is a recreational club. Mm -hmm. Yet they organize the richest Grand Slam in the world. Do you understand? That's a bit like where I'm I'm going to because, yeah, you talk about sponsorship, that's very important, and which is why I, I before I asked the question, I talked about the quality of membership that you have in a code club that if you could have a consensus of such members to say let's develop something I, I i do not think personally that sponsorship would be an issue but that's that's a different discussion discussion here the thing is let's even talk about you know the ways to make money from golf it's not just sponsorship of course you can do your golf tournament like your ultimate yeah. challenge you can do that in in the in the great club today because of technology you can stream these things to a mm. global audience yeah and if it's interesting enough people will subscribe to say we want if you have a million people around the world willing to pay one dollar 
So just watch that. That's a million dollars. It's not, you know, so there are other ways, you know, sponsorship, broadcast right, mm -hmm. merchandising, you know, ways you can make money. But the question is, is there a, result, is there a vision to create that kind of property and, and to create and manage that kind of property? Before we, ask, before we get to that, because I can see you're smiling like, before we get to that, let me even just ask um, Ayo that, why are, you, why are you supporting golf? Why, is it because of your passion or, you know, uh, because you want to, to, you love the sport, you want to just promote it in Nigeria? Um, do I love the sport? Yes. Mm. Am I passionate about it? Yes. Mm. But when it comes to sponsorship, mm. number one, is sponsorship is, is driven by passion. Mm. But there must always be a return on investment, investment for yeah. business. Mm. So I look at our kind of business, we run technology business, and 80 to 90% of our customers are predominantly B2B customers. Mm. And when you deal with B2B customers, you also need decision makers mm. to be part of your business. Mm. So some of the places we find the people who influence our business, by the way, we run business across major verticals. Mm. And the captains of the industry in those verticals, we find them more often on the golf course. Mm. Because when you're trying to do business, especially in technology, right, I tell people, even though there are influencer, technical recommender, there's always one decision maker. Mm. So we realize that those people, they are easy to be found on the golf course. I might say, if I get on the golf course with you, we play a typical 18 holes for average of about four hours plus or minus 30 minutes. So it's difficult for me to have the four hours of engagement of playing with you without getting to know ourselves. Mm. So again, you don't probably need more than four or five major deals in the course of the year. Mm. And if you can find it on the golf course, so be it. So yeah. I would rather sponsor that deal mm. that open doors for me to do more businesses. Mm. So this is part of what is driving our idea. However, I also look at our business, the type of business we run. Our competitors outside Nigeria, in, in South Africa, in mm. Europe, in America, you see them sponsoring golf mm. more often than any other sport. Mm. So again, in Nigeria, it, it's a lifestyle. Golf is like a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we're beginning to see more and more people get interested in, in, mm. in playing golf. So like I said, the return on investment why we, we, we sponsor golf is the fact that the people who want to appeal to that is where we could meet most mm. of them mm. and we're hoping when we meet most of them our brand name keep resonating mm. and the momentum will also keep the momentum as well so this is what inform our decision and like we're discussing in terms of taking it to the next level means that we're having something similar to like of course we're not there yet mm. in terms mm -hmm. of the world tour, the mm, TG mm, of this mm. world. That is something we could start, like Captain Rightly mentioned, start in Nigeria, mm. get across West Africa, of course, get into the rest of Africa. And one day, you never can take from Nigeria to the rest of the world. Mm. So it's something we have started. We'll keep doing it. We have committed to, to sponsoring God. And we're seeing the return on investment. And we're still going to do more of that. Because mm. it's something that really, I mean, I hold close in my heart. Mm. And as long as we're seeing return on investment. Our commitment will be on the increase to the sponsorship. Which is, you see, Tadi. Yes. He's laid out for us, you know, what I, what I have felt of golf mm -hmm. um, uh, being a, a huge opportunity in Nigeria. Yeah? You're talking to the power guys, right? You're talking to people who can, who when they turn, uh, society turns with them. Do you understand? So it is not that sponsorship cannot be had. Of course. It is not that the appeal for the right, you know, sort of people is not there. Personally, what I think seems to be missing are the products, you know, that have been cons consistently built over a period, because you, you just don't come in with something and then you disappear and then come and disappear. It doesn't work that way. The, and I think that there's an opportunity, whether it's a Koei club, whether it's the IBV um, golf club, whether it's any club for that matter, mm -hmm. to over a period, because you guys, you are, you are big guys on your own, you know, to, to self, 
not crowdfunding, you know, but <laughs> aggregate your resources, you know, your if not your financial resources, your 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 gravitas. Mm -hmm. You know, aggregate that and use that to, you know, to do something um, long lasting and something like a legacy, you know. So what that that's that way I, 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 I get I get your point. Mm. But you know, all these clubs that you have mentioned, mm. be it IBB, mm. Botakot, mm. Ibadan, mm. Ikeja, Ikoi, Ibon, mm. they are all recreation clubs in which the primary objective is recreation. Mm. Play a game of golf, sit down together, network, and gist. Mm. The primary objective, the pay subscription member is a membership club. Their primary mm. objective, and they give, okay, let me put it this way. They only give platform to professional golfers who are in those clubs to train them so that they can also learn the game and become, let me use the word perfect, or mm. learn the etiquette of the game, improve the technique, learn the technique and improve mm. on the game. Not necessarily to now drive, like you try to say, the crowdfunding. They can facilitate to support mm. the pro. That's my own opinion. I think that to support individual players. Yeah, they, they do support in the majority of us support individual mm. players. Not as if we have enough professional golfers in Nigeria. If mm. you want to do tour, mm. you say Lagos tour, mm. uh, Abuja, uh, Ibom. There are those professionals are there. Mm. That's why I talk about sponsors. I think maybe the idea of, of uh, golf federation also needs. I think they need to drive this process, not a recreation club like Ikoi. Mm. That is not why we are there, because there are others to because you can't take the money, the membership money in Ikoi, for instance, or in Ikeja or in IBB, and say you are channeling it to sponsorship. Or pro, we give part of it to them mm. during maybe Nigeria Cup, the pro they play and they share money. Mm. That's where it ends. Mm. But for us to talk at this level in which I see, I see your the vision that you are trying to mm. count for them. Mm. For us to talk at that level, then Niger uh, Nigeria Golf uh, NGF, Nigeria Golfers Federation, they need to up the ante. They need to create a clear vision. Mm. They can't drive this thing. The Nigeria Football Federation is doing it. Mm. They too can do it. They need to up the ante and then be able to create, even if you do two or three in a year, major one, mm. gradually it will grow. And believe me, sincerely, we may say things are tough or there are challenges in Nigeria, but brands are still there mm. looking for where to connect their consumer's passion with a brand. And if God it, 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 is it, mm. so be it. They put the money, but they want to see the products. Mm. So if you don't have the products, if you don't have the brand, mm. it's difficult. Because I'm talking as a marketing person. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it starts to be a symbiotic relationship. Mm. If it's not there, then if the product is not there, individually, they are there. Mm. But a platform. Mm. That's where NGF comes in. Mm. And they need to play their role. That's my own opinion. Personal opinion. Yeah. So, what do you think? No, it's pretty much uh, correct. Um, like you said, um, the passion is there, like I keep saying. Mm. Uh, we have enough pros in Nigeria. We do. Uh, what I think will also be exciting is, I'm looking forward to, and now that you mentioned it's a business opportunity I'm mm. looking at, we now need to celebrate our pro you know like you're on the streets you don't even get to know you mentioned about La Padena, which is a pro mm. out of Ikoi 1938 club and mm. Nigeria number one mm. pro professional golfer today do we celebrate them enough how many followers do they have are they treated like the regular celebrity on the street do we even make enough noise are there enough apparel brands in Nigeria and I'm seeing a couple of Nigerian uh, apparel um, brand design and mm, mm. you even want to say okay let me pick up Ola Pade, for example mm. um, branding decorating make a lot of noise about him what is the share value what is the share value for me as a brand or as an apparel 
producer in Nigeria. So we need to begin to see how we create excitement around the game of golf. And if you're there listening to me, these are part of the opportunity. Beyond just sponsorship, how do we now begin to create the celebrity affairs around the golfing environment? Beyond the amateur like myself and Captain, we enjoy playing <laughs> golf. <laughs> but the professional golfers, we need to now encourage them. Do they even have managers that manage their affairs? Mm. They get to travel. Uh, I was in South Africa last week. I saw two of Nigerian pro mm. on the same golf course. I said, oh, we say it came, we came around to play with some friends. Mm. And they're in, of course, in preparation for another tournament mm. in Africa. So do we celebrate them enough? There are opportunities that exist. And knowing that golf is, or all you care, is associated with health. Mm. So where do health go? What do health want to see? So we need to begin to celebrate the pro and make it even rewarding for people looking forward to and looking up to them. And uh, was Captain was talking about the golf academy in Kuhi 1938 as to speak, mm -hmm. training our children. And we're beginning to see uh, you talk about Osime. Osime and I actually team together to play okay. the corporate challenge a few okay. weeks ago. Oh wow. Fantastic boy. Seventeen, mm -hmm. he plays Alika two. 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 Solid fan golfer. Fantastic. Fantastic. 17. 17. 17. He, he plays good golf. Good golf. So I want good to temperament. For example, good temperament. He has so a... the question is, what happens to that guy? Where is his route to... <laughs> his route is going pro. He's going pro. Yeah, but I mean, he goes pro how? Not in Nigeria. Nigeria. So I, that's... Played, I played with him for four hours. He gave the opportunity to ask him mm. questions. I think... Is going in to study computer engineering in America, mm. and it because he will, of course, he will follow his passion mm. while he's studying in America. Yeah, that's he's what they all do. A, a good platform and environment. Mm. And I think, uh, again, um, for most of the pro we have in Nigeria, up until recently, when the likes of Kapitadi came on board and the lady section and the lady captain tried to put in a lot of resources, put in effort, talking to people like me and some other sponsor, let's encourage our kids. You've seen that most of the pro we had in Nigeria prior to about four or five years from now, they Cardiff. actually grew from Cardiff. Yeah. So, so they are already old. Like, it's like football. So for a kid who started learning to play football at the age of three, four, five, it's not the same thing with a man who started learning to play golf at the age of 20 or 15. Mm. The result won't be the same. Mm. But when we had the likes of Sime at the age of, the first time I played with his dad some four, three, four years ago, he was telling me, my son is 14, he plays at the cap four. I think your 14 was already playing at the cap four. Mm -hmm. Now he's 17, he's playing at the cap two. So by the time he gets to America, it, before he starts playing scratch. Yeah, hey, of course. Like, okay, so, so here's the thing. Yeah? The business of golf mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is not going to be driven by... It's not going to be driven by recreational clubs, no. Do you understand? No. no. It's not going to be driven by recreational golf. Clubs, yeah. Even though recreational golf is huge yes right mm -hmm. so right now it's probably it's, it's probably it probably dwarfs professional golf in nigeria do you understand mm -hmm. but you know the the problem people usually talk about when they talk about domestic sports in nigeria is, is infrastructure yeah you don't seem to have that problem do you in golf yeah i don't think so you don't have that problem. I, I don't think we have that so problem. infrastructure is there yeah so it's just for you think it's just for some entrepreneurs yeah. to come up with an idea or a vision for golf that is, is, is commercial, perhaps? Mm. Commercial. It has to be commercial to be sustainable. Mm. A commercial for golf pros. He made a point that you know, I, I wanted to, you know, I thought about amplifying. You see, sports, right? It's about, it's not just about golf. Mm -hmm. It's about the stars. Yeah. If you don't have stars, you don't have sports business. That's why I mentioned Tiger Woods. Yeah, Tiger Woods. If not because of Tiger, most black guys won't be as part of that. At the time the PGA head of the PGA said that Tiger Woods created a false economy for golf. For golf, yeah. That they thought golf was actually bigger than it was, but they didn't know that the, the, it was the impact of Tiger Woods, yeah. right? So in Nigeria, if we need to grow any sport because speaking with you i can tell you clearly that the same problems you you are, you are outlining today is 
like echoing problems I've heard from tennis, from other sports. Everybody's saying, let somebody else do it. But, but it's a huge business opportunity. Yes. And we find that in South Africa, in America, in Europe, recreational clubs actually get involved in this business. Yes, they will get involved in the business. Sorry to cut They will get it because they have a platform, infrastructure. Mm. They have the infrastructure. But you say we have the infrastructure. We do. Yeah. So we have it. If you want to say you want to play a professional golf tournament mm. in a Koyi club, mm. it will be set up for you mm. to, for that standard. Mm. We, when we play some of our club championship mm. or Nigeria Cup final, mm -hmm. it's like they set the pin for you. <laughs> you come back and say, say you are wicked. Mm. <laughs> and all those. It will be set up for you. But do you and have, as a Koei club, do you have a tournament? Your marquee tournament, for instance, do you have any such thing? For amateur. For pros. Why yeah. amateurs? No, no, that's what I just. I, 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 no, I understand that. that. I'm, I understand what yes. you're saying. That as, as, recreational, as a recreational club, club, you do that. Yeah. But if you need to then make a business of because what well, is going to that's why I mentioned the ultimate challenge mm. is growing. I think the, this will be the this year will be the fifth edition, mm. if I'm right, if, either fifth or fourth edition, mm. the ultimate uh, the ultimate challenge, and it will not take so. Mm. The money grows every year. I think they started the first year with three million naira. Mm. I think last year was five million. Okay, five million will not take so. And people come from West Africa and all those things. Of course, they give them maybe a commodity stipend, but it's just to challenge you to be able to take the uh, the they will they play for money. Yeah. And that one is growing. The other one, like I mentioned, many STEM also support some tournament. Mate, they support some of those tournaments. Those are the ones I know. There may be other tournament, professional tournament in Nigeria. That is being done somewhere when the pro travel that we may not know. But like I rightly said, it's also time, like you are doing for, that we're talking now. Mm. Maybe it's high time the video also play a role in this to highlight some of these our wonderful professionals. Mm. Because there are some of them, really, they can compete. They play in South Africa, they play in uh, Egypt, they play across West Africa, and they win laurels. They come out and uh, we celebrate them, yeah. in, but on purely on our own social media, mm. uh, maybe within the WhatsApp group and uh, a group and all those things. But they win Lawrence. Mm. Uh, it, we need to amplify it, make it larger than life. Mm. So people to really know, ah, when he was working on this, oh, that's the number one golfer in Nigeria. And this problem is what virtually every other, every other sport has in Nigeria. Do you know that I'm more conversant with tennis? Mm -hmm. If you get into the tennis community, right, there are guys who play maybe not ATP level, uh, ATP top 200 yes. level, but they play decent tennis. There was a tournament we had in 2002 at the Lagos Lawn. Yeah? These two finalists were going to play. A lot of, people, of the people that came for the final didn't know them. Mm -hmm. came, oh, our friends are doing something, let's go there. It turned out to be an epic match. By the time the match was done, the stadium was split. The arena was split in two. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you. Some guys this so this funny. guy. So, <laughs> and by the end, the guy that won, people rushed on the court and hugged him. People that day, they, they were meeting for the first, first time. time. Yeah. It's all about the stories that we tell, you know? Exactly. The stories that we tell and how people know about. But the point for me is, okay, so now we have to look at the, 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 the Gulf Federation, what if the Gulf Federation is not equipped with the right sort of people to drive the business? What if the Nigerian PGA is not equipped with the right sort of people? Are we then just going to sit back and say, until they get it right? We're getting old. Our time is going. You know, what's our legacy? No, you are getting old. I'm getting, I'm getting younger. You're getting younger. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but in any case, if, if, if for, for me, I, I really think that if, if for instance, you're a member of Ikoi Club, Gulf, me, I, I'm, I've, I've been fighting your captain about this, right? Um, because he says you guys are a recreational club. But, but then That's I'm saying that, look, yeah, using your leverage, you know, your big guys, using your leverage, you can, you can create a marquee tournament in a year for Nigerian professionals. One that can reward the champion with like 
50 million, 30 million, and they too become authentic stars. You don't want to create a star and tell stories about somebody that earns 2 million naira from a tournament. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to pay them because golf people, sorry, uh, professional players are the richest in the world. Yeah. Tiger Woods is probably a billionaire now. You know what I mean? It's not something that you give small, small money and then you, you expect them to uh, fans to follow them. But I'm saying that for members of the Kuwait Club Golf and all of that, if you don't want to do it, then I'll come to Kuwait Club. Please, you are welcome. <laughs> I will come there and I'll structure a program for you guys that you can do on a yearly basis. You will get sponsorship. It will be on television. It will be on. It will be streamed live, and then you get you know streaming revenues, TV revenues, and all of that. If you want me to come in to do it for you, I will. Ezaga. You are, this, this that's a, a challenge. It's a call to action. Mm -hmm. I take you up on that. You're taking me up. I on take that. you up. Yeah. Let me I'll hear. Take from, you up. Let me hear officially from you. No, it's, it's official now. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> so um, we've been talking golf. We've been mm -hmm. talking um, about you know the potential of golf in Nigeria. I didn't know, for instance, that there were professional golfers in Nigeria. That's that's oh, something well, that needs to see. Lost. And there are lots of golf courses around the country. Yeah. Very, very encouraging. Beautiful you know. courses. Beautiful courses. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I Championship saw, courses. I saw Rayfield, that is supposed to be the oldest club in this country. In Joss. And then I saw the, the, you know, the tourism around Rayfield. Spectacular. Do you understand? So I think there's a lot to be done. I, now I remember the name of the young guy who is making waves at the IBB uh, Junior uh, Tournament. He's, he's Godwin Okoko. You, have you heard of okay. him? Okay. Yes. You've heard of him? Yes. Yeah, the guy is absolutely, I hear he's, he's a fantastic player. You know, these are, see, you, you know about him in the golf fraternity. You need to move him from the golf fraternity to the public space. Let other people know about this, this uh, Okoko. Let them know about the Pedro guy. Let them know about, you know, this young boy that you're talking about. You know, let people know that 17 year old Nigerian golfers are doing stuff. You know, beyond your communities, get people to talk about these people. Get the press involved and let the press. Do you understand what I, do I get your point? Part? Do you understand? Yeah. Because once you do that, I do not think that there will be a problem for sponsorship of golf in Nigeria. Nigeria. Because you guys, like he has said, you guys are big boys. Yeah. So you, you know, everybody wants to. Who said we're a big boys? <laughs> Sorry? We're just ordinary boys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ayo, any last words about how we we Aravo? Yeah. Are you go, Are you are you ready to step up? Put more money into this because you look to be you look like you're you're making some money in return. We're committed to sponsorship of mm. golf um, of golf in Nigeria mm. by extension to West Africa, mm. and we will keep to our commitment. Mm. And we're looking for other people to join us in what mm. we're doing. I mean, the sky is big, you know. Mm. Just when I have is taking one part, we want other big brands to join us to do to, to doing what we're doing. Some mm. big brands in Nigeria are already sponsoring some of the tournaments yeah. we have in the community. Of course, we never have. Um, enough. enough. And what you have said is an eye opener for me, and it's a call to action that we could actually come together and do something very big. And in partnership with with with, with um, plus um, sports TV, yeah. sport TV yeah. we could actually do something bigger. It's all it's all about the hype mm. around it. How much noise we make around it, mm. and making it justifiable for the pros in Nigeria to actually come together by hopping the game. Mm. And by the time. We make a big deal out of what we're doing. Mm. It becomes a lot easier. You're talking of 50 million. What's it? Who say we could actually not increase it to 200 million? Yeah. It's a function of how we hype it, mm. how we brand it, and create excitement around it. But there are a couple of challenges. So, for example, Eco United 38 is, is family oriented, mm. as you can see. It's for leisure, like Captain mm. rightly mentioned. So, the gate, I mean, the couple of limitations. Mm. But by the time we have the likes of you coming around, we can actually blow it up. Mm. I mean, in the interest of the game. And on the last note, they always say the greatest game ever played is mm. the game of golf. Okay. Tell you any last words. We have, we have to come bring this home now. <laughs> okay. Like I've said, we have the infrastructure. Mm. And I think the... You have the gravitas. Yes. And I think uh, just for us, because I can see you, from your discussion, you're passionate about the professional aspect of it. Mm. Uh, it, it is a combination with the recreation uh, clubs, mm. individuals, corporate uh, organizations, mm. for us to see the potential in developing that line of business. Mm. And everybody will know that with passion, with um, 
continuous support, mm. it can actually also be something that some of our youth who think there's no hope mm. can actually say, ah, this is a game that some of these people are key into mm. and other people can gravitate towards such a thing. Mm. So I think it's for all of us to wear our thinking cap yeah. and see how we can uh, bring it to life. Thank you very much for, for honoring the invitation. It's been a lively dis uh, discourse. You, you guys have been fantastic guests. And, and so that, that's our, our bit for today. Uh, we've been talking golf, golf business, the prospect of golf as um, the, the commercial prospect of golf, golf in Nigeria. And, um, you know, as you, you would have heard, there is hope. There is, the, the, the dynamics are in place. It's for, it's for us to just um, craft the right vision and get the, the champions, the, the, the legs to champion um, the cause. We, we, we can make golf um, a, a much bigger commercial success in Nigeria than it is today. So that's it for today. And until we meet again next week, this is me, Orufo Izaga, saying uh, be productive, be good, and stay safe. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.